Oh my gosh, I am not looking my best. The video you're about to watch was recorded in like early, mid-June. It's now late July. I've spent all of July in Seattle with family. I'm blonde now, lots of updates to come. But I just never got around to putting this video out. And I have two videos, this one and another one from May where I talk about books but I still wanna put it up because I talk about a lot of good books. So this video and the next one will be very outdated. More newer content soon. But I have a lot of important things to say in this video, so buckle up. They're all still relevant even a month and a half later or whatever it is. So cool, just wanted to put, preface this. <laughs> yeah, hope you're well. I am so like delayed and overdue in talking about books, but I mean, I guess what I'm even more delighted on is talking about institutional racism. So, hello. It's been a little while for a lot of reasons. I've been struggling whether or not I want to be making videos still for like a number of reasons. One of the big ones being that I feel like there are a lot more nuanced, diverse, interesting voices out there. And I'm like, do people still need to be listening to me 13 years later? I don't know. I guess while I'm here though, I have some things I wanna talk about. I spent a while um, curating the description box down below. If you've been following me on Instagram or on Twitter, I guess, but mainly Instagram, you know that I've been very, very active in speaking out about Black Lives Matter and the racial injustice going on across the country and across the world and all of the other issues going on across the world. Some of the most important things down there are register to vote if you live and can register within the United States. Please, please register to vote. Primaries are happening right now, are happening all summer. The election is in November. Please be registered. Please register in advance. The voter suppression going on this year is like, I feel like surpassing the past, uh, if that was even possible, because voter suppression in this country is truly horrific and disgusting. Also, please, please fill out the census. If you are eligible, um, if you are like, an adult living in your home, please fill out the census. Um, black and brown populations have been historically undercounted in the census. It only occurs once every 10 years and this disadvantages their families, their neighborhoods, their school systems, just everything, their communities. So please take part in that. I will link that down below. I'm going to leave some Instagrams down below. I've been really enjoying the um, pull up for change Instagram. It was originally, um, sorry, I have notes down here. So that's why I'm looking over here. Uh, Jackie Ana, I believe, um, was kind of the pull up or shut up inspiration. And it's essentially going brand to brand and asking them to disclose their like head team and the diversity or lack thereof in those. And I found that really interesting. Honestly, like one of the number one ways you can help what's going on right now is to know where you're putting your money in every aspect of life. I'm not just talking about shopping. I mean like down to every company that you support with your dollar, who is a part of that company, who is in charge, looking at that. Um, so I found that Instagram really helpful. Here's a bookstagrammer I have followed for a little while called Honey Butter Gal. Her name is Kayla and she is, she works in this field, but she's doing a series of videos on racism in American cities throughout history. And she posted her first one recently and was really, really good. I'll link her down below. I found two cool Instagrams. One is by from uh, black indigenous people of color, BIPOC, by POC. I don't know how to say that initialism, um, but it's a really cool Instagram where it's all companies of people of color, obviously. Um, and then also another one that is Melanin and Sustainable Style. Um, I think it's Melanin ASS, Melanin S. Is that right? Yep, it is, that's funny. And it's just all sustainable companies, which is really cool, especially if you're interested in the world of sustainability. Speaking of that, you cannot ca claim to care about the planet. And this goes for veganism, this goes for sustainability, people who claim to be fans of eco-fashion, sustainability, etc. You cannot claim to love this planet until you acknowledge how like black indigenous people of color are impacted by environmental hazards, waste pollution and the climate crisis. Environmental racism is, it exists and it's horrifying and it, it impacts these communities far more than it, like 
systematically, systemically, far more than it does white people. So please research environmental racism. I'm gonna leave some links down below and some videos and things. Please read up on that. Um, I know a lot of my followers are very interested in sustainability. So check that out down below. I wanna to briefly touch on Everlane because I have talked about them a lot in the past and I will never be doing so again. I mean, I might mention pieces that I already have, but I will not be promoting them anytime in the future. So just wanting to touch on that because I know they have been awful. I'm going to leave down below tons of petitions and also places to donate. I don't, I, I've been donating a lot of my money. Um, so I know that at this point in like the revolution as it were, a lot of people don't have a lot to donate, but I will suggest regular smaller donations. Um, those donations are really important to these causes, especially because a lot of people are donating a lot right now, but will they be donating in three months? We don't know. So those regular donations really go a long way, even if they are small. I especially want to emphasize the black trans organizations I'm going to be linking. I found a like change, is it a, it's like an act blue, one of those donate pages that splits your donation to a bunch of different black trans or black queer organizations. That's really cool in terms of like donating, but also it's just a great resource if you want to like learn about a ton of different black trans organizations. So check that out down below. Remember that Pride was started by black trans women so we have them to thank it's pride month show your respect also i'm going to link down below <laughs> assuming that the description box has room for this hopefully i'm going to be linking um pieces of legislature that you can contact your congress people about systemic racism disproportionately affects queer and trans black people and communities so these like pieces of legislature are just like the tip of the iceberg on things that could help those communities. Also just going to link down below information about Poland, Yemen, Hong Kong, uh, Palestine, all of the uh, crises going on across the world so that you can educate yourself. There's so much going on and um, it can be overwhelming, but just trying to take things one day at a time, learning and being an ally is an ongoing process. And yeah, there's so much to do and to learn. And I think that's all um, in terms of my own growth and like anti-racism activism. I'm putting a lot of things in place in the way I work and the way I work with companies. And um, I already read quite diversely, but I've also like all of June have just been reading black authors, which has been amazing. There's obviously so much that I'm doing in my personal life as well, but just know that, um, yeah, it's an ongoing process and I'm learning and I'm listening, so that's where I'm at with all of this. I hope you and your loved ones and everyone is well. Remember that we are still in a pandemic. Um, if you're going to a protest, please get tested like a week after or a few days after. Um, wear a mask, even if you don't think it'll work because you know what? The worst you can do is wear a piece of fabric on your face. The best you can do is save a life. So now let's talk about some books. I'm gonna try and not like dwell on the, the synopses and details of these books because this video is going to be quite long but obviously everything I talk about in this video I highly recommend and I will be linking down below or at least I'll put the titles down below. I don't know in terms of space if there'll be room to link them all down below but um and also my next video is going to be an old video from like mid-May I believe um but it talks about a lot of the books and shows I've been reading and watching and so I want to Put that out there i don't want to re-record all that content so it will go out it's just an old vlog so that'll be my next video and then after that i'll probably talk about everything i've read so far in june or by then june will be over so woo, let's go number one this is the midyear book tag by the way number one is the best book you've read so far in 2020 and that is a toss-up between two potentially three books i think I don't know. I've read a lot of things I'm really enjoying and I'm learning that I'm going back in my mind and thinking about things that I maybe didn't give a five star before, but now I'm like, maybe I should have. Um, the Vanish Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett is one I recently finished. The Mothers by Britt Bennett was one of my favorite books of, was it 2016, 2017? I don't remember. A few years back. So I've been eagerly anticipating her next book. I'm sure you've heard about this a lot, but it's about two sisters who grew up in a town, um, a small town. They part ways they leave the town one goes on to live amongst like dark-skinned black people and then one decides to try and pass as white so it's about colorism and it's incredible just incredible yes 
By the way, if you want to keep up with what I'm reading, I post everything on my Instagram stories. And I have like a story highlight on my Instagram. So I can link that down below. Another favorite book I've read this year is Long Bright River by Liz Moore. Um, Riverhead honestly post, post published some of my absolute favorite titles. Um, Liz Moore wrote The Unseen World a few years ago, which I also really enjoyed. This is about, I see both about sisters interesting this is about two sisters one is a police officer one is a um like suffers from an opioid addiction and it kind of deals with um something happening in the area i believe this is in philadelphia there is some, a man targeting the women who um like hang out in a certain area who often are op like addicted to opioids and he's targeting that community and her sister goes missing and so she worries that she's been a victim. So it's really good, really, really good. I'm also currently reading Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And I feel like this is gonna be another favorite. So I'm not very far into it, but I love it. I have my highlighter in there so that I can highlight as I go. Best sequel you've read so far in 2020. I've read like a couple random sequels um, that were fine. I guess I'll go with a prequel um suzanne collins new book you all have heard me talk about this already it was in my last video i think i just love suzanne collins writing um this book wasn't perfect it wasn't like everything i wanted it to be but i thought it was really good and i think about it quite a lot so i guess i'll go with this new release you haven't read yet but you want to um the only one i actually physically have is a burning by mega mujumdar mujumdar this is a gorgeous book. Um, it's also blurbed by Tommy Orange and Yajasi, so that is a selling point. I actually believe that I found this book as a, like, if you like Yajasi, you'll like this, and I love her, so. This is a debut about three characters who seek to rise to middle class, to political power, to fame in the movies, and find their lives entangled in the wake of a catastrophe in contemporary India. So, I don't know too many details. Oh, it's blurbed up here by her as well, that's cool. Um, but. I was just, I thought it sounded really good. It's also like a really weird trim size. Can you tell? I don't know. I have three other books that I have written down here. Um, Daughters of Smoke and Fire by Ava Homa. The Girl with the Loudening Voice by Abhi Dare, or Abba Dare, um, and The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. Those are three others that I want to pick up but I have not yet. Number four is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And my number one is Transcendent Kingdom by Yajasi. Again, that was one, of, I think it was my favorite book potentially of 2016 or 17, same year as The Mothers. And I just think about it all the time. And I think she's an incredible writer. So I'm very excited for that. The second book I have written down is A Beautiful Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green. I love the first book in the series. So hyped for the second one, comes out in a couple weeks and also The Death of Vivek Oji by Kweke Ameze. I read Pet by them recently and I'm currently reading Freshwater, so excited for another title by them. Number five is your biggest disappointment. I have two written down. The first is The Death of Mrs. Westaway. I read um, by Ruth Ware. I read Ruth Ware's like newest book, The Turn of the Key. Yes, um, last year and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good mystery thriller and it was like, really creepy. I read it right when I moved in here and it really spooked me. Um, but I, I just found her previous work kind of disappointing. So, and I've heard all of her previous books before that are less good. So I don't know if I'm gonna, I think I'll wait for new Ruth Ware rather than going back in her work. Um, and also Anna Kay by Jenny Lee was something that I was excited about, but it just like was not for me. I talked about it in another video. Um, I think other people really have really liked it, but it's just like, was disappointing for me personally. Number six is your biggest surprise of the year. And I have two for this. The first one is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is about like a relationship between a teacher and a student and it spans years like after her um, experience and also flashes back to when she was a teenager. And it is incredibly powerful. It was surprising in the fact that like I went into it interested but had no idea the impact this would have on me so very heavy um if you've ever been in like a any sort of abusive abusive or ma manipulative relationship 
this will be a hard one for you to read. And the other surprise was Normal People by Sally Rooney in just in that I'd heard so many differing opinions on this. Like some people really love it. Some people really hated it. I like didn't really know. I thought I would just feel kind of middle of the way about it and I actually really enjoyed it. So both my surprises are like things that I wasn't sure about but I really enjoyed reading this. Favorite new author and that's either a debut or someone who is new to you and of course I can't answer anything with just one person so I have two. Um, actually I have three. Sorry. First one is Kylie Reed who wrote Such a Fun Age. I don't have the physical book though I want to get it but um Yes, I listened to the audiobook of this earlier this year and it was so funny and so good and I like it more the more and more the, the more I think about it. That was a mess. Then I also have really been enjoying Akweke Meze, who I've talked about already in this video, and Bernadine Evaristo. Um, I l listened to part of the Mr. Loverman audiobook and then I had to return it to the library and I haven't been able to get it back yet. <laughs> So I really enjoyed that and was super into it. Um, I really need to get a physical copy, but I just haven't yet. Um, so I really like that and I know I'm gonna like the book as a whole and I really am loving this. So I feel like Bernadine Evaristo is going to be a new favorite author. Number eight is a new fictional crush and I just, I don't really have one. I don't really get crushes on fictional characters anymore. <laughs> Number nine is newest favorite character. Um, I have two for this. The first one is um, Emma, who is, I believe, yeah, the first person you meet in Girl, Woman, Other. And I just think she's really cool. So if you've read this before, I really enjoy Emma. This is, by the way, like a series of stories about different women in Britain, like different black women. I think they're all black. So far they are um, in London or around London or related to people. They're all like connected, essentially, in some way. At least so far they are. Um, so the first person you meet is Emma and I really enjoyed her. Also, I really, really like Desiree from The Vanishing Half. Oh, I forgot to mention King from King and the Dragonflies by Casey Callender. I just thought he was so sweet and pure. So this is a good one. Number 10 is a book that made you cry. The first one is My Dark Vanessa for maybe obvious reasons, just very, very emotional. And the other one was King and the Dragonflies. This is a middle grade story about King whose brother has died and King believes that he's turned into a dragonfly. And then there's kind of like some other stories going on, but it's like a very emotional family story about coming out. Um, he had a friend who came out to him and he thought maybe he felt the same way, but his brother overheard and he like, told him that that wouldn't be a great idea um, for King to be gay because being black and gay in Louisiana would be hard. And so once his brother died, he like kind of shut that down and he, he cut off that friend. And so he's kind of dealing with the grief of losing his brother and also the grief of losing his friend and also dealing with the sexuality. And there's just a lot going on and it's so good. 11 is a book that made you happy. I have three books for this. Do I ever just have one book for an answer? Absolutely not never will. First one is The Only Black Girls in Town by Brandy Colbert. I always want to say Colbert because I watch a lot of Stephen Colbert, but it's Colbert. I love this book. I love Brandy Colbert. All of her books, I've read them all, I believe, and this is her first middle grade. Very, very good. It's basically about what the title is, The Only Two Black Girls in Town um, in this like small seaside coastal California town. It's so good and it just made me really like happy. It's very sweet. Felix Ever After by Casey Callender, who also wrote this one. I don't have the physical copy, but it's another one that really just made me happy. It was very, very sweet. Um, I'm sure this is another one that's being talked about a ton right now, as it should be. And it's about Felix Love, who has never been in love. And he is a trans boy coming to terms, like kind of thinking about his gender identity and grappling with that, also dealing with a relationship and like a friendship. There's a lot going on. It's um, a YA and it's really good. And the last one is another YA, You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. And this one I've known about for ages because I knew about it last year and was really excited about it. So when it finally came out, I was hyped. And it's about a black girl in a very white suburban, I think Indiana, Illinois town, Ohio 
like Midwestern town, I can't remember. I'm the worst. She is running for prom queen because you get a scholarship if you run if you win prom queen and she meets another girl running for prom queen and starts falling for her. It's very pure. Very happy making. That's a weird way of saying that. Number 12 is the most beautiful book you've bought this year or received. I have a few in terms of like physical book. This actually I bought last year or I got last year at BEA, but I actually might have used this as my answer for that last year. Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Munson. It's very, very good. I finally actually read it this year and it's just gorgeous. Um, Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Britt Bennett like wins the cover award every year for me. She's just got the best covers. Um, this one, also gorgeous. Love it, love the train at the bottom. Um, and Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power which I also read. Um, Rory Power wrote, wrote Wilder Girls last year, which I really enjoyed, and I liked this one a lot as well. It's very strange. It's like a family story. It's a lot of corn. I don't know how to explain this well. <laughs> yes, those are all like the physical ones. In terms of beautiful writing, I'd say Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mundell. Um, I finally got around to reading this, and everyone was right. It's very good. And number 13. Um, is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I will say like everything I talked about in questions three and four I listed a bunch of books that I want to read that have already come out or are going to come out They're all top of the list and then three books that I have here physically. I really want to read more Zadie Smith I have Northwest um, That's gonna be high priority and then all my mother's lovers by Ilana Massad is one that I've been talking about reading for months and I keep picking it up and then like something else comes along or I get a library hold in or something. And the final one is Severance by Ling Ma. The like blurb is, is the end of the world or just another day at the office, which I think is funny. Um, I think it's a take on like work culture in modern day and also there's uh, like a pandemic or something. So relevant. I don't know. I really want to read this. I've again started that a few times, but then other things have come up and that is all. This is going to be a very long video. I hope you stuck with me to the end. If you did, uh, tell me down below, like answer one of these questions. I don't know. And leave an emoji of a bear. I said that because I was looking at Winnie the Pooh over here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking your very valuable time right now to spend with me. Um, there's just so much out there right now and so much amazing content being made and so many different people like starting YouTube channels or like starting Instagrams and using their incredible voices to share their stories. And I feel thankful that you have chosen me for the last half an hour or however long this video was. Please check out the links down below. Please contact your representatives about everything that's going on. Your voice is so powerful. We live in a democracy and although sometimes it feels like that is under attack, um, you do still have such a powerful voice. Write letters, write emails make calls most of the time they don't even answer and you're just leaving voicemails but that's still powerful and it's easier for people like me with phone anxiety so please do what you can listen to people of color especially black people right now seek out stories don't ask don't rely on them to tell you things but also like seek out their stories okay thank you for watching i'll see you soon again my next video i think is going to be an old video and then after that, we'll get back on track. Cool. Bye.